All right. Hey, folks. Um, today, I'll be talking about how I fixed my chronic lower back pain. So firstly, thanks for making it onto the channel. Um, appreciate any likes and subscribes. Uh, so let's crack on with the topic. So basically, about, um, I would say about 14, 16 months ago, so it was roughly last year, 2020, about March time, February time, um, I had taken up a new hobby, <laughs> and it was uh, cycling. So I was, I got myself a bike, just a regular push bike, and I, I started to do a lot of cycling. And this was just my attempt at getting a bit more cardio in and just getting a bit, you know, healthy. I was starting to approach uh, a big birthday, and I thought, you know, let's uh, let's try and improve my my fitness a little bit and branch out a little bit from lifting. Also, at this time, we were going through various lockdowns here in the UK, and so I needed something else that I could do rather than just lift weights. Uh, something which I can enjoy. The weather was starting to pick up, so I thought, what the hell, why not? So I got myself a bike, started to do some cycling. And over the course of, say, one or two weeks, it wasn't a long time. I was doing some cycling. I wasn't particularly good at it. And one day, I ended up taking a very long trip. <laughs> and it ended up being something like three hours one way, and then it was supposed to be like an hour or whatever back. Um I got lost and it ended up being more than that. And I was basically out cycling for something like six hours that day. Um, now, I didn't really have the cycling technique down particularly well. The road was very, very bumpy and I ended up really hurting my lower back. Now, at that point, it was still pretty much okay. So I was still all right. So I carried on doing my normal activities. It hadn't really sank in yet how bad it was. And I hadn't got it checked out or anything like that. So I carried on with life. I went to the gym, et cetera, et cetera. And that was all fine. And there was one day where I had gone to the gym. I think it was a Thursday. And I had done a train back. So I had done some deadlifts. And this was training at my home gym. So it wasn't anything too heavy. Like by this time, uh, gyms were locked down here in the UK. And then I went out on another bike ride. And about halfway through that bike ride, I just had to shut it down. I thought, this is too much. Went back, basically pushed my bike back home. And the next morning, I couldn't get out of bed. It was absolutely awful. I've never experienced pain like that before. It was pain which quite literally took my breath away. It was that bad. I've never experienced that before in my life. And over the course of the next sort of six to nine months, the pain just persisted. And it was daily. And it was bad. I, no, no one could really do anything about it for me. Um, Painkillers didn't really work that well. I didn't Just your basic sort of you know, ibuprofen and stuff like that didn't work particularly well. And I went through a lot of thoughts about, well, okay, is this just my lot for life now? Like, did I try and do cycling? It didn't really work out very well. Boom. I'm injured. I'm approaching 40. Like, that's it. Like, this is it now. This is my life for the next however many years. And I went through all those sort of phases in my mind, desperately, while all the while, desperately trying to find some sort of plan to say, well, how can I fix myself up? Another time, so it was, you know, gyms were closed. Uh, biking was now out, so I couldn't do a great deal in the gym. Biking was out, and it was all a bit of a mess for me because I thought, well, just my my level of activity right now is just through the floor. I can't do much. How am I going to just carry on with my my lifestyle? So, so I got I started to catastrophize very quickly. So essentially, what I wanted to talk to you today, I uh, talk talk about today, was just the whole process of back pain and dealing with back pain, and talk you through what it all means and how I eventually fixed mind. So the problem um, that I see is that, and it's what I went through, is that back pain seems to be very misunderstood. It's a little bit like diet culture in the sense that alongside diet culture, um, people can get very sort of desperate about it. So back pain is a very striking thing, like you feel it every single day. But in the same way, people have body dysmorphia issues or bad relationships with their bodies and stuff like that. And they feel that every single day, then they get very desperate about it. And it can be, it can be in a similar way to body images, back pain can be debilitating. And this is where people tend to take advantage of you. So you get your kooks and quacks online and even your well-meaning and well-intentioned idiots online who try and diagnose your problem. But the reality is that it's very, very misunderstood and there is no one cure-all fix. A lot, And that's what I'm going to explain to you today. So that's how I see the problem. There's a lot of misinformation, and I think the problem in itself, back pain, is a very misunderstood issue. So here are some of the reasons that I feel why people continue to fail. And I did some of these, um, so that's how I, how I know. And I, So firstly, is um, they were insistent on aiming to keep training hard while they were injured. 
this is something that I see not only with back pain, but with other things like elbow tendonitis, the shoulder pain is a big one that I see all the time. People will say to me, so Faz, what do you think about like negatives to cure my tendonitis? Maybe that'll help. I'm like, you know what might help? Maybe just take some time off the gym might help because uh, <laughs> that's really the way forward. People don't want to do that. They want to carry on training and they want to train hard. It's in that whole sort of mindset of to fix something i have to do something so they feel like they've got to do something they feel like they have to be active towards it it's a very weird sort of i don't know puritan mindset like i must do something about this resting is not enough resting means i'm lazy and uh, i don't deserve to feel better so but a lot of times just rest can help so certainly in this case the insistence on trying to maintain peak performance is where people fail that you've got to just throw out the window for a second and decide to yourself do I want to get better or do I want to carry on trying to lift maximum weights? Like there is no in between. There is no, oh, I'm just going to half ass my recovery. That's not the way it works. And I'm not saying you have to be sedentary completely as you'll see, but certainly aiming to keep training at maximum effort is one of the reasons that people continue to fail when it comes to their back injuries. The next thing is if they get a scan and a diagnosing, a diagnosis, they hold on to that for dear life. They, they get a scan and say, okay, I've got a bulge in my L5, L4. And that's it. That's, defines them from this moment forward that is their personality that is who they are hello i am jack i'm 22 years old i have back pain great nice to meet you <laughs> like rather than actually respond to the symptoms day by day that's another thing they become their diagnosis and you see that in other walks of life as well like i know somebody who, who broke her leg and she has a almost a disbelief of being able to run a 5k again just because she she identifies as that person with a broken leg so that is quite sad to see, but it's that holding on to the diagnosis. You've got to get rid of that as well. Become, you know, become more open to it. Finally, um, or not finally, finally for this slide, they read more and more and end up becoming confused by the aforementioned experts. So all these experts saying it's a herb or a drink you're missing from your life or whatever else, you know, they just end up becoming more confused and they end up with a lot of stuff online, which is just not particularly helpful because it's very like, weird and woo woo and it's not actually particularly helpful or it tries to box back pain into being one particular pro one particular solution which it's just not like back pain is highly misunderstood because it can be very very vague and there is no one particular cure for this and there's no one particular solution so we've got to bear that in mind moving forward and just to continue this um most advice tells you to rest and slow down which is generally the opposite of what you should be doing you shouldn't be going full bore, but you definitely should be just resting it after the initial injury on trying to slow down. That goes hand in hand with what I was saying earlier about having your diagnosis as your personality, yourself. Now, you can't do that. Like, okay, I'm John. I've just got a broken back. That's me. I'm going to chill over here in the corner. Like, you have to avoid that type of thinking and you have to be prepared to, to do some do some physical activity to recover yourself. Um, other reason why people continue to fail is they will attempt, this kind of goes hand in hand with the first point, they will still try and maintain optimal performance, but this is somewhat less than that. They'll even try to maintain going to the gym, even if they're trying to do something a bit um, a bit more active, a bit more sort of um, heavy or not quite as heavy as their max efforts, but trying to do something challenging. But they'll follow that by just sitting on their bum for the rest of the week. So they might do some high activity sessions, might do some rehab sessions, but then when they get home, they're just sat in a chair like this for all day, and that's not good. Other reason is that um, strength-based lifting might not be the be-all and end-all that we once thought it was for back pain. Like you don't, you know, always bulletproof your back by doing deadlifts and all that kind of stuff. Like it's part of the solution, but it's not the entire solution by far. Strength endurance appears to be much more of a relevant factor. So I've gone through six reasons why people continue to fail. I'll also add one more in which I didn't put on the slides, which I've just thought of, which is that when people start to slow down, when people start to rest and slow down, inevitably, because diet is so intertwined with training, their diet normally ends up going to crap as well, and they start to gain some weight. And even if they don't gain weight, just a diet going to crap and eating some of the some basically their macro split being all over the place or just eating types of foods which they don't like they i could i don't know why this happens perhaps it's increased inflammation but they just feel their injury feels worse when they do that when you're at home all weekend 
eating pizza and burgers and just not doing any exercise, not going out for walks or anything, your pain will guaranteed feel worse. So that's the seventh point there, which um, I'm just going to add on on the fly. So I want to give you guys a bit of my background. Me, I'm a lifter first and foremost. I've lifted weights now for 22 years. Now, from this injury, I received zero decent answers from health experts, nothing which actually helped me in the end. All were one or more of the mistakes that I mentioned in the previous slides. I also had extreme pain from this injury. I've never had this type of injury before, no prior, and it was extreme pain, it was debilitating. I am middle-aged, uh, but I've been heavily active my whole life, so there's no reason why this should come up all of a sudden apart from that one acute injury. And it's no reason why it should have lasted and persisted for eight to nine months. That injury should have been done and dusted within one or two months and I should have moved on. Scan wise, that's what it showed. However, the reality was that I am still getting pain even after that and today that's why I'm gonna make this video and talk you through that. So, I wanna talk a bit about why the injury, so let's talk about the chronic aspect of the injury. So I, thankfully, I only had the pain for eight to nine months. I've been lucky, I mean, the people have, have, had been, have had back pain for eight to nine years or more. So why does this get so bad? Why does it get to the stage where once you're past the initial analysis, does it become chronic? So most people who are pain-free will exhibit some type of injury. Most people who are pain-free will exhibit some kind of disc bulge on a scan. There was an older study I saw on athletes which showed that most athletes who are active and are in the end, I think it was done on NFL players, they will have some type of injury that they're working through, like slap tears, rotator cuff tears. Just anecdotally speaking, I'll tell you this. Many years ago, about 2010, 2012, one of the best powerlifters in the UK snapped most of the patella tendon in his right leg. Um, he carried on squatting, wrapped up his knees, his, his musculature built up around it. And as long as he didn't step down on the pavement in the awkward position, he was fine to do everything. He carried on squatting well over 300 kilos with most of the patella tendon in his right leg gone. I have another friend of mine who has zero patella tendon in both his legs. He carries on squatting. He squatted up to 250 kilos. For you Americans, that's roughly 550 pounds. And he does that absolutely fine with no issue. The body can recover surprisingly well and most people have some type of injury. I'm pretty sure I've got no rotator cuffs left, but the musculature builds up around that and it does the, does the job anyway. So we are adaptive organisms. We don't just rely on one area. You see this in rat studies, and I know I shouldn't quote rat studies, but in rat studies, they, they, they cut one of the calf muscles and the other calf muscle hypertrophies massively to make up for what it's missing. The human body does this all the time, and it should point to what you need to do to actually fix the issue. It's not rest, because if you rest, well, then there's no need for your body to actually fix the issue, right? So bear that in mind as I continue speaking. Next is why it gets so bad. People end up in a pain rest cycle. This was me as well. Like I basically woke up every morning in a little bit of pain and I just thought, right, that's another day of pain. It just propelled. So I would basically got in that rest pain rest cycle because I was in pain. I rested more. I decided to lie down more. I sat when I should have stood. I stood when I should have walked, you know, all that kind of stuff. So it was a pain rest cycle. I became far more likely to be less active than I would normally. So I did less walk. My step count for that time period went down dramatically. So John Sarno wrote a book uh, years ago called The Mind-Body Connection, and that this idea that injury means catastrophe, which leads to inactivity, and that is disastrous. So it just perpetuates it. It perpetu perpetuates you going to a negative sort of cycle whereby you do less general activity, which makes your injury feel worse, and then that also leads to poor dietary habits, which again makes your injury feel worse, and it goes into the cycle. And all of a sudden, you, before you know it, you're 10 years down the line, your back still hurts. And you're like, what the hell's going on? That tea that I bought off the internet didn't work. Next thing is, yeah, catastrophic thinking. Um, this was me. Like, I did this so much. I basically had that injury. I thought, oh, okay, you know what? Fine. I'm, um, what was I? I was 38 at the time. I was like, yeah, I'm 38. Maybe this is just my life now. Okay, that's it. I guess I'm just going to have back pain for the next 40 years. That was it. That, that's literally how I thought. It was insane. There was days I woke up and I couldn't imagine not being in pain. And you get people who get into this mindset where they think to themselves, you know what? I'm just broken. 
like I'm broken, I'm fat, I just can't, I'm injured, this is who I am. They It becomes their personality rather than who they were previously. It takes over as their personality. This is disastrous. And this thinking can influence the way people move, the way they plan out their day, the way they even, the way, the way they breathe, their gait, their posture, all this stuff. It completely affects their belief in themselves. This was actually similar to a video I made the other day, which looks at how your lack of belief can affect your dieting success as well. And people get into this way of thinking, this this it's almost like a learned helplessness where they just think, you know, I'm I'm so broken, I'm not even gonna try. So that's the next thing. The next thing is that if you've already decided that you know what the injury is and you know what the diagnosis is, then in a way you've already varnish proofed your mind to solutions. You've got to avoid that way of thinking. You've got to be a bit more fluid and a bit more open to understanding like a bit more about the injury and being able to actually cure it and being in a place where in the future you might have zero pain. So yeah, my own example, like I did catastrophize heavily, I, like I was saying earlier, I thought, you know, this is just my lot for the next 40 um, years. However, part the benefit with me, the one sort of saving grace with me was that at that point I had lifted for 20, to, for 20 years. It was in my DNA to just lift weights. And so I started walking and it was nothing crazy, but that's all I could do at that stage. I did some kind of activity and I got up to something like 10K steps a day, which was a lot less than I was doing when I initially got injured. And that was part of the process which helped. So now I want to sort of talk about some of the things that I did of what helped. So let's go back to this screen. So some of the things that I did, which massively helped, it was basically a four part process. So firstly, I did gentle daily stretching. Now, the actual stretch itself, I did a cat stretch where I went from rounding to arched. I did that a lot. And I did that roughly for maybe half an hour per day. And it would just loosen me up. And that always made me feel better. Always made me feel better. So I would go round to arch, round to arch, just hold that position for a while. And the movement made my back feel a lot better. It just started to get it, get it going. And it made me feel, it made me feel a lot better. So inactivity was was what we want to avoid. So at the same time, we don't want to avoid maxing out. So the first thing is gentle stretching daily. Next thing is lots of gentle activity. Like if you do have a desk job, then that needs to be broken up. Being sat at your desk all day is a recipe for continuing back pain, mostly because people will match that with going to the gym. And that's not very good. Like you can't have the pulsatility of heavy, heavy gym work followed by complete rest. That's generally what people fall into and they get massively frustrated. You've got to take things very, very slow. So lots of gentle activity. And if you have something like a Fitbit or Apple Watch, you can build up your steps slowly to the point where you're active most of the day. If you do have a desk job, I just recommend trying to get up every once in a while. Um, a standing desk initially might be a good idea, but it might be a little bit too stressful. So you may need to alternate between standing and sitting. If you have a much more physically intensive job, you've already got to step up. However, if that is preventing you from resting your back, you may need to pull back from that. But if you do pull back from that and take some time off, again, don't just be inactive all day. Stick to the same approach, lots of gentle activity. Make sure you're staying active. I would recommend roughly, yeah, 10K, 10 to 15,000 steps a day. It gets demonized, but it's a reasonable amount. And walking is a nice gentle activity which pulls and stretches and strengthens your lower back as you walk. So that's good. Now, so the first thing is stretching. Next thing is lots of gentle activity daily. The third thing is getting yourself back in the gym. Initially, what I did was I started with lighter variations. So I did no other back work except for hyperextensions to begin with. Hyperextensions, and I think I was doing very, very light Romanian deadlifts very early on. But once I had gym access again, I went to hyperextensions. So something which is very light and allows you to load. Hyperextensions were very good because they tend to be quite easy on the back, but they still work the back isometrically, so statically. That was enough to begin with. I didn't really want to take my body, my spine through a range of motion with a weighted in a weighted position. So just very, very light variations where you're mostly doing static work. So you're trying to build up the musculature in the lower back. You're trying to give your lower back a reason to strengthen. And then from there, you can move on to heavier variations and just progressively load. So hyperextensions could be light Romanian deadlifts, adding just 2.5 kilos or five pounds to the bar every session. You can do those relatively frequently um, and reasonable rep range, like anything from 12 to 20 is fine. 
anything more than that and you might just be getting to the point where your form gets compromised but remember you're starting off light i started with the bar just 20 kilos or 45 pounds that's what i started with when i was doing remaining deadlifts and then it, when it was hyper extensions it was all um very light work body weight work for a while running those reps up and everything else that i did in the routine was didn't put any stress on the lower back so overhead presses was obviously out even things like uh yeah like squats were definitely out but other exercises where i had to lift the weight up like a dumbbell bench for example I didn't bother doing those i sat i opted more for machines so i made sure the rest of the program was developed so that i wouldn't have any stress in the lower back at all so i could just really focus on the hyper extensions and the romanian deadlifts and later on different variations eventually moving on to things like stiff leg deadlifts where i could pull them from the floor and just making sure i increased the weight over time that really helped so the gentle stretching daily steps and just progressively loading the back that really helped that in itself did a lot on that note actually if you are an ego lifter and you refuse to use two and a half kilo plates or 1.25 kilo plates you refuse to use a little biscuits then like you will carry on having back pain like it's going to happen like that's just guaranteed you have to learn to love the progressive loading there is a reason why we progressively load so your 20 kilo bar might be 22.5 the next session and then 25 the next session etc etc it's not a case of i'm do 20 first session that was light i go to 30. i don't care if it's light go with the smaller increment whenever you can and even keeping to the same weight for a couple of sessions to be extra careful if you feel that's necessary and the final thing is diet independently appears to be a factor i don't know why this is i could probably theorize that it's got something to do with information but i'm not going to go there because that's not my field of expertise and it's a little bit too like internet woo woo so um for whatever reason though switching to a diet which was mostly like you know whole foods uh, less processed seemed to do a lot better i actually dropped quite a lot of body weight as well and that helped a ton i don't necessarily think the actual body weight l dropping was a massive benefit like i don't think losing 20 or 30 pounds was the sole benefit i think possibly just to cleaning up a diet because it it seemed to have an immediate effect so and I also whenever i have whenever i go through periods of time where my diet is worse my back does tend to feel worse so diet independently appears that independently of weight appears to be a factor so that would be a sort of a four point process now i would say if you are going to embark on something like this get approval of your doctor first rule out anything which is like you know benign or like catastrophic which we need to avoid activity for altogether make sure your doctor understands what you're trying to do and approves it so don't attempt anything based on what i've said here without doctor approval but yeah this would be my sort of four step approach to to fixing back pain and right now most days like i don't think about it probably so the back injury occurred, I think, February, March time. It persisted till roughly November, December time. Now I tend not to think about it. The only reason I'm making this video is I had an inquiry from a client, a potential client who was interested in knowing a bit more about back pain. And so that's why it prompted me to make this video so that I can share my experiences of a time months ago, which I actually look back on now and I think, wow, that was bad, <laughs> which I... I was in a great degree of daily chronic pain and I thought that was going to be my lot for life. It's not a nice position to be in. I read a lot about it. I tried a lot of things. Ultimately, none of that worked except for really taking ownership of my own problem and attempting to fix it with slowly progressive stretching, gentle activity, not relying on any one solution, some progressive lifting in the gym and also cleaning up my diet. All of that helped massively with regards to chronic back pain. And I was fortunate that I could cure it in just nine months. As I say, people struggle with this for decades. All right, folks, hopefully that was useful. Um, just relaying my real life experience on how I fix things. And um, yeah, great. Um, if you haven't done so already, please do subscribe. Um, there is actually a link to work with me down in the description below as well, if you'd like to do that. Um, and so, yeah, I will uh, see you in the next video.